How is it going guys? It's Eclipse here and welcome back to the latest vehicle World of Tanks console has to offer the Jaguar 1. Now everyone thought hmm they've released a new weasel toe and today's video I'm gonna see whether that is the case. Of course it has a ATGM and it is the only gun you can use on this vehicle. It has a total damage above 1400 and it also has ridiculous penetration for the tier but what it doesn't have is the same characteristics as the weasel toe now this tank as i expected has a much lower power to weight ratio making it much harder for you to be able to get into position at least using the forward speed and there's some weird kind of things about this tank in that it can travel very quickly f backwards in terms of its reverse speed at least to begin with than it can forward but then at the high end you can go faster forward just slightly than you can backwards so it essentially will speed up faster backwards at the beginning and then it will slow down um, of course from the forward you will be pretty slow to accelerate up to top speed but you can go faster on the high end so yeah I mean that's kind of how the speed will work and we'll see it throughout these two gameplays that I have for you today. Uh, I'm not going to say they're the best gameplays to be honest with you and that's partially down to me not being a pure Cold War player but also down to the tank itself. It's um, it's interesting and it takes a few games to get used to. Definitely the first game felt a bit hard to play this tank and I'm sure most people will think that if they do decide to purchase it which is what I want to highlight is that if you want an overpowered ATGM launcher that is going to be able to wreck opponents, this probably isn't the one I choose. I mean, the Weasel Toe is almost better in every regard, other than the fact that, yeah, I mean, you can't do as much damage. And to add to that, you then have this armor model, which is much bigger, so the tank is huge compared to the Weasel, um, hence why it's called a Weasel. Uh, and of course then you also have this problem where you're not as fast as the weasel either meaning that yeah you can find yourself trying to out traverse people and it is painful to say the least which is why I am um, why I wanted to showcase this tank and I think off the bat if I was gonna someone was gonna come to me and say should I buy this tank for like 16,000 gold or whatever the ridiculous price wargaming are asking for it if you want the ultimate edition slightly less if you want the lesser edition my answer would be no now unfortunately we don't pen the M1 there even though we were aiming for the lower plate slightly went off to the left hit the track maybe but we didn't pen even with the ridiculous pen and you can often bounce quite a few rounds or not do any damage if you hit the tracks which uh, definitely feels bad now we somehow managed to pan pen the challenger i was going for the upper bit of the side armor where usually there isn't any space uh, so hopefully we would pen we did manage to but you know apparently the front of an m1 we can't pen uh yeah i i don't even know but either way we'll take it and of course we've done 40 in, uh, well 4,000 damage we go for some damage on the side of the t72 but we hit the tracks and we do 60 damage now talking about the reverse speed earlier this is what i mean you can quickly escape from an opponent very nicely and you can see here we're doing about 65 if we're not going down a slope which is very good for a reverse speed you saw how quick it was to accelerate so it's good at taking its way uh, away from opponents which is nice uh, and you can use that I'm sure some of the best players in Cold War will be able to use that really nicely with this vehicle but my main concern with it is the shell velocity is awful 250 meters a second which means if you try and target anyone from any distance it's horrible and yeah you're gonna have to get involved but you're not small enough to avoid a lot of shells so and you also don't have the best traverse speed so you're not able to get around people now that means that this tank is relatively balanced a bad shot by me right there i know should have actually aimed in on the site unfortunately i, uh, I don't even know i was hoping it might just hit anyway i was being lazy probably but yeah i mean the traverse speed ruins this tank when you get up close and personal because you think that you're going to be able to out traverse these heavy tanks trust me you're not going to be able to do it very easily and remember side armors filled with spaced in this mode along with the frontal armor and just basically everywhere where you really have to get around the back end and you can't traverse someone that quickly where you can easily get around the back end so just just 
keep that in mind. Now, tanks like a Thumper, we can just auto-aim, basically. He was showing his turret to the back. Should I have fully aimed 100%? I'm just lazy. Um, but we pick up 5,500 damage. We're going after this T-72. Hopefully, we can... Oh, he gets taken out too quickly. Uh, and, of course, the reload of this tank, 15.6 seconds to do 1,400 damage. So you're looking at a region of about... Uh, what? 5,600 DPM, slightly less, um, but yeah, I mean, it's decent DPM, but effective-wise, it's very difficult for you to pen every single one of your shots. You have to be in position all the time, and um, even though we had a pretty mediocre game for Era 3 of Cold War, we still picked up an inordinate amount of silver, nearly 500,000 for that game, which is fantastic, and you're definitely going to be able to make your way into uh, earning a ton of credits with this vehicle with its 65% silver bonus. But let's jump into this map, which is on screen right now, just when it starts. Now then, given the fact that we've played this vehicle when, um, you know... Uh, how do we say, we might have been a little bit too passive. This game, I'm going to try and play a little bit more aggressive and see if we can get some more damage. Um, and we're going to highlight a few other things and why, if you've watched Ricky Tiki Tave's review of this vehicle, you'll see it isn't quite what we expected in terms of it being as overpowered as the Weasel, which I am thankful for. We don't need any more of those tanks. I'm glad that Wargaming tried at least balancing this one slightly. I mean, the fact that missile launchers are in the game is annoying in terms of how much damage they deal, uh, but I guess it's not the worst thing considering we don't have artillery in Cold War, which is also kind of nice. So this is kind of like the equivalent of artillery in Cold War, even though in World War II artillery were able to deal more damage to you than this tank could in one shot. Um, but regardless of all of that, we're going to push down on Hellfire Pass. This is uh, a standard battle. We have uh, the weird spawns. Usually you're spawning in the northeast and southeast of the map. This one is actually spawning in the northwest and the southeast, uh, which is slightly different. Now, what I do here, try and pull back behind the bushes to uh, avoid being detected. We go for the side shot of the M1 and we deal no damage. This is my experience of playing this tank. Uh, I'd be interested to see whether I'm doing something completely wrong. Uh, yes, I know spaced armor on the side is probably going to take up some of the shells. Uh, instead of trying to get spotted, what we do is we uh, fire before we come around the corner so we don't get spotted. Uh, something you can do in this game. Obviously, I didn't go around quick enough to readjust my shell, uh, but it's something you can do. Either way, we go for this um, M1, A1, who's pushing up. We readjust right at the end to end up actually hitting him, uh, which is nice. So 200 damage. But yeah, I mean, you can see how many shots we would have been able to get with any other tank. And we'd have probably done more damage with other tanks. So you can see how it's starting to balance uh, compared to some of the other vehicles. We end up trying to hit the uh, T-72, but we only deal 600 damage. So it's where you're starting to get a 15 second reload to be able to do 600 damage. And unfortunately, can we get a shot into the T-62? We do in probably the least aimed one of the lot, and we managed to pen, because, you know, wargaming. Um, either way, 2,300 damage is okay at this point, but still, we want to be able to do more damage, and the problem with this is we've got to start pushing forward to try and find other people. Now, I go for a speculative shot, and there we go, no damage. It's basically the same shot is what we did on the T-72, but this one didn't pen. It must be because we hit the tracks rather than slight bit of armor. I don't know. We then hopefully go for the Chieftain, but of course the more overpowered version of me ends up taking him out in the Weasel Toe, which is fantastic. Now, I'm thinking I've got ridiculous pen. We should be able to pen the Thumper through the front since the 477A and the uh, kind of the new vehicles, 292 I think it is, um, are able to pen through the front of the Thumper's turret, which apparently we have the same pen or higher. Uh, but yeah, we didn't manage to do it with that first shell, but I don't know, even know if we pen with the second one, but we finish him off either way for 3,200 damage and a little bit of assist, which is nice. It will boost up your silver earnings for the game. And you know, that's always a benefit uh, when you are playing uh, these premium tanks in Cold War, which is basically the only time I play them is when I'm trying to earn money. Now we find a 477A, so I'm thinking, mm -mm -mm, nice little bit of ass right there. He's got his um, backside out to us and uh, yeah, deal no damage to the back of him. 
I was thinking that is an easy pen. We are definitely going to be able to pen him. There's no way we would bounce. But of course, we must have hit the tracks or something. I try and go for the shot on the 477A. It's speculative to even hit him. Um, but yeah, um, we don't even deal any damage. But now I go for this guy, the T72. Can we get around him? I'm hoping maybe we could try and weasel tow him. Can we turn? Uh, 10 seconds later, we try and fire, we bounce, don't do any damage. He then gets pumped by the team, which is about the only reason we actually survive at this point. And you can see the traverse speed here, it is painful. Uh, and luckily we reverse, can we shoot before he does? Yes we can. And there you go, we pick up a final kill. And 4,500 damage, 1,300 assist, it's okay. but. You know, could we have done more damage if we were in another tank? Most likely, we wouldn't have bounced a lot of these shells. We would have been able to pen. We could have probably gone in a bit more and been a bit more aggressive, used a little bit of armor that you can get with a lot of the other tanks. And so, if I was going to say you want this missile launcher, I don't know. I'd probably recommend playing another tank that is a tech tree one that you don't have to pay for and has a missile launcher instead, even if this has more alpha than those tanks. Um, yeah, it, it, it's painful to play this one. Uh, you could play it as a spotting build 100% since it's very good at remaining hidden. Is it as good as the Weasel Toe? No, but <laughs> there you go. I guess you can't have everything unless you are the Weasel. But either way, I'm just trying to move. Uh, I want to reposition, see if we can get another shot before the game ends since we are deciding to cap because of course. And then, uh, yeah, I was surprised I actually got taken out from falling down there, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> great way to end the game, um, and there you go, the better tank coming in in top, better player probably, and there you go, 4,500 damage with a little bit of assist and picking up a decent amount of silver. Hopefully that's giving you a little indication as to what this tank is about. Is it as good as the weasel? No. Uh, is it overpowered? No. Is it going to be a little bit painful to play? Yes. Should you purchase it with your gold? If I, if it was me, no. If I was recommending a tank, would it be this one? Probably not. Um, but yeah, hopefully you did enjoy. Hopefully you saw what this tank is about. Let me know if you think it's completely different and is more overpowered than the Weasel. Or if you think this tank is actually very competitive. Let me know. Maybe I'm just playing it entirely wrong, which may be the case. And I'll be interested to see how you would play it differently and get better results than I would. And hopefully you'll join me back tomorrow where we have a brand new video coming in. So hopefully I'll see you there and have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.